<laughs> Hi guys, today in this episode I will try to wake up this old uh, fashioned CNC machine with the new motion controller. So the plan, of course, this is not the final uh, plan. So as I said in the previous videos, uh, first of all I want to see how the new motion controller can work together with the old uh, uh, stepper motor uh, controllers because maybe many of you guys uh, really just want to upgrade some old machines so this is like an exact uh, same scenario so what I did today already without the camera because I just completely forgot it to, to record everything and sorry for the lighting it's, uh, it's you know it's just a garage so this is the old uh, motion controller DSP which was run on a very high uh, 100 megahertz uh, <laughs> speed and this is the old uh, power supply so the UC CNC AXBBE requires a 24 volt and a 5 volt power supply this power supply is made in 2006 so we really cannot rely on these old um, electrolyte capacitors and everything I just dropped here into this box, maybe some of you, or maybe somebody on a eBay or on a Wallapop or something, something really interested on this old fashioned thing is. And I also demolished today this uh, front panel control board, of course, because I don't need any more this really old fashioned serial uh, bus on the front and USB port on the front and accidentally I broke a little bit <laughs> this 20 something year old uh, plastic so my future plan for the full upgrade is uh, we will attach somewhere here this is really sturdy really heavy piece of metal here so uh, we will attach somewhere here a console which will hold the, the touch monitor and the keyboard and whatever and here I just want to see the um, really basic um, yeah, controls like a main switch, a main emergency switch and I will keep all these old uh, fashion uh, uh, rotary switches for switch on the compressor, the, the vacuum table and the, maybe some extra lamp and here is the old inverter turned out this one has a lot of uh, very nice analog inputs and outputs so we completely can control uh, this thingy with the new motion controller so there is two uh, free analog input there is two analog output couple of digital inputs uh, for limit switches for speed selection switches whatever and it still can drive the the front polar uh, remote controller now on the output side there is nothing really fancy on it and I checked the electronic everything is okay all the capacitors are good there is nothing burned so at the moment we still can use this, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. And now I just have to drill a couple of holes on the, on the original plate to fix this uh, new motion controller. I almost finished the installation of the new power supplies, maybe you can see this uh, two boy over there, okay. So yeah, it is what it is, anyway you know guys we will replace this box uh, completely. I have a couple of relays and some mysterious <laughs> devices really probably for the for the vacuum pump and I guess it's also driving the the coolant pump at the moment I just printed out really the basic uh, wiring diagrams for this uh, motion controller because my limit switches are turned out the uh, NPN type this is the plan what we have to apply it looks to me very simple hmm. I have only one problem with the old uh, stepper motor driver so the big drivers are using this type of connector so there is no screw terminal over there maybe you can see so I have to use this uh, really ugly cable I really don't like this type of cable in heavy industrial installations um, so probably I just have to cut it and for meanwhile I don't know it's so thin uh, I guess this uh, terminal will accept really nicely this uh, really teeny teeny tiny tiny cable so uh, I have to go back over there <laughs> and uh, continue the work 
six and a half hours later. Well, <laughs> this was a little bit longer than one hour. Uh, I ran into some kind of problems around the grounding. In the past, uh, they used the, the, the chassis of the DSP as a grounding point, and uh, you can see here, but uh, the original uh, connection board was connected by these uh, short pins, and the DSP was connected directly to the plate. So, because they used the, the DSP board, as a grounding plate. So when I connected the new motion controller and I did try to control the VFD, I got some really weird signals on a cable. So uh, I thought it's maybe it's a grounding issue and maybe you can see over there, but this is my uh, junky junky <laughs> cabling now. So now everything is fine. So the limit switches has their own um, uh, grounding point. So I connected the limit switches and the VFD grounding point to the uh, motion controller and almost all of my problems is disappeared. I still have a problem with the limit switches. So I see here only one, two, three cable and the fourth one is going to the front uh, control panel. But I have four limit switch, so there is one, there is other one, there is a fourth, a third one under the, the gantry, and there is a fourth one in uh, here, okay? So somebody in the past <laughs> connected two limit uh, switch to one cable, probably this one. So tomorrow I have to figure out what's going on with this cable. Don't forget, this is not a simple installation. I have to do some kind of uh, reverse engineering too, because of course there is nothing documentation about uh, this box and about uh, the cabling of the machine. So I had to figure out almost everything one by one, which cable is doing what, where is going, which relay is doing what. Uh, so, and I had a little bit problem with this uh, stepper drivers uh, because of this uh, really stupid, really old fashion cable. But I figured out uh, uh, from other documentation what I just find on the internet, let me show you. It's absolutely not the same name, <laughs> but it looks very, very, Similar, the product name is the same, but there is some kind of differences. So this is talking about mostly the 88M version. And maybe you can see here, okay. But I have the 613M. And there is really little differences somewhere, somewhere. But um, on the end, I figure out what's going on. This limit switch is, is working, but the other two is not. But of course, in a UCC and C, the limit switches and the home switches, they have some kind of weirdo configuration. So if you have only one switch on the axis, the UCC and C software think like a home switch. But if you're not uh, uh, igniting the home sequence, then the software see this uh, limit switch as a limit switch. So when you hit the limit switch by a manual uh, uh, movement, of course the software will stop everything and you cannot do almost nothing. Uh, you will see soon, bang, it's hit the reset, okay? And you cannot come out from it. In a manual they are saying uh, you should not use like a limit pin and a home pin together if you have only one you just have to configure like a home pin and then the software will figure out if you, if you ignited the home all sequence, which is this one, uh, then the software will figure out, okay, no, this is a home uh, pin, not a limit switch, okay? So now <laughs> there is no way to get out from this because you cannot move nothing, nothing is working, so Whatever you press, whatever you do, there is nothing what you can do. Only what you can do is 
if you delete uh, this data from here, so this uh, configuration, which one is the uh, limit pin, then you apply the settings and even with this you cannot do nothing because it's always come back, yeah? So zero, save and this came back to three. <laughs> so the only thing what you can do really is close the software, okay? And uh, start the software again, okay? And of course, uh, do like a Z axis has no limit pin at all. Apply and save. Probably in the old system, these switches functioned only like a home switch. So all those guys. And th this guy over there in this corner is acting like a real limit switch. So I have two options now. Uh, or I will install one, two, three, four, five limit switch. And I will configure the three original one as a home switch. So this is option number one. Option number two, again, to use uh, this uh, UCCNC smart solution. Uh, that's it for today. <laughs> now I just have to clean up this mess what I made here. Mm. Three days later. Uh, so now here is the problem. Let me show you. So here is the uh, home switch, yeah? And I set everything in the software. Maybe I'm missing something, but uh, now if I, so at the moment now, maybe you can see this is uh, 1.6 millimeter and it's kind of okay, but I still can go over, yeah? So this old uh, stepper motor driver uh, can handle the mechanical errors, yeah? So now the software should stop all the operation which is going to, to the up direction, but it's not. So I can, so this is what's going on and it's really annoying. So now in a software, the machine coordinate gets some kind of crazy, crazy number like 79 something, something. But if I calling the home all function, the machine will go back to the zero position, which is somewhere, uh, somewhere here. And you will see, but uh, Z is already zeroed out. So I, I really don't understand what's going on with the coordinate system in my installation. I guess I really, I messed up something. Yeah, now everything is zero, 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 which is abnormal. So. It should be somewhere here, one number, uh, something, uh, other positive number. Uh, I didn't install yet the, the port expansion because it turned out at the moment with this old uh, box and with this old uh, stepper motor drivers, I'm, I'm still good enough with the amount of IOs. So I figured out what's going on with these uh, home and limit switches. The colors of the cables are changing somewhere in a machine, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere. So over there is starting like a yellow cable and when it's arrived here, it's, it's blue. So I stick the uh, coin to the sensor, so then I figure out what's going on. And now, finally, everything is moving, everything is uh, fine and dandy. Uh, my other issue is about the speed of the motors. It's maybe some settings, but uh, the original DSP driver drive this CNC so quick and so mad bad, the whole garage was uh, shaken. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, probably some uh, setup still. So until we replace the um, the stepper motors and the stepper drivers and the whole control box. I think I'm okay. I'm really not okay with the with the spindle. Maybe you can hear it. Yeah, it's really bad. Ah, I want to show you. I also managed <laughs> to connect this really old uh, uh, VFD. Yeah, that one <laughs> with. The, with these really weirdo ports and configuration jumpers. This is a really old fashioned, like 20, 
it's almost 20 years old. It's made in 2004. So I managed to, to connect to this uh, motion controller. I, I think uh, uh, this motion controller, it's, it's, it's a really smart one and a really nice one. So if now I'm pressing this button, yeah. So the spindle is speeding up, but for some reason, uh, I cannot change the speed from the computer. I guess it still uh, has some, uh, something to do with the programming of the device itself. I can change only the speed at the moment only from here. Yeah, it's really noisy. Yeah, it's really noisy. And I also managed to control the, the coolant pump system. Yeah, so now the coolant pump is running. But anyway, in the future I have a plan to replace this really big and all the noisy cooling solution to some kind of uh, radiator here with uh, simply PC uh, noiseless uh, fans. I, I guess uh, this uh, spindle motor or the new one anyway, they're not generating too much heat. Let's say like uh, the heat loss is, cannot be more than uh, two, maximum 300 watts. So, so why I wanna do this? Of course, I wanna get rid of, uh, of this really big uh, box, <laughs> really noisy Chinese uh, cooling solution. And I wanna get rid of uh, this uh, really heavy uh, tubes and tubing system, which is running all the way everywhere into the gantry, in here, and to the heads. I don't want to install the, the cooling solution on the head because, of course, uh, depending on the design, what I will cut, uh, this will do some rapid movement. So I'm not sure this is <laughs> good for uh, this uh, PC radiator. So uh, I will install it to here because the Y Mm, it's not moving so much than, let's say, the, the Z and the X. Uh, so let's say this point is moving three times less than the, the head. And I find here a lot of space inside in this box to drop in the pump, even uh, connect the, the pump to, to this heavy aluminum block to, to dissipate more heat. So I will have... Uh, somewhere here, the radiator, or maybe here. Now let's uh, talk about the software. I don't know too much about UCCNC. I know really well, really old-fashioned Siemens and Fagor and those type of uh, industrial CNC solutions. Of course, this one is uh, <laughs> way, way more intuitive and way more uh, understandable. I just remember uh, when I repaired the CNCs in Hungary, uh, and they had this really old uh, Siemens controllers and really crazy HMI screens and all this uh, whatever and everything what we touched and we changed the settings or we just did a diagnose. We had to do everything by coding. Pull like STA100111, so core registers and all, all this crazy stuff. This one is, <laughs> this is the future, we, we can say. I find the money interesting part in a software. Uh, I, I think in the next uh, month or so, I will figure out completely what's going on with this uh, software. And um, probably most of the misunderstanding and the, the wrong operation at the moment is because my knowledge is like equal like zero. So tomorrow I will do the first cut probably, so then I will learn a lot, so probably I will damage some wood boards or whatever, some tools. <laughs> this is really basic part of, of the learning curves of any CNC. Now on the weekend, I will show you guys what kind of computer I bought here, okay, and why I choose this one, and what kind of softwares I will use for my application, and maybe you can learn something about this topic, and on a weekend, 
I will make the, some kind of basic plans for the new control box for the, for the motors. So then the CNC drive LTD can work on my new box so they can give me a really nice price offer. I still have a very small issue. Maybe you can see here if I press here the forward, it's not let me to do and nothing is working from here. Only I can change the speed of the spindle, but I cannot shut down, I cannot do nothing, and even I cannot go into the programming function. So probably something, something inside in the VFD is blocked or uh, some jumper setting is uh, blocking me to, to change uh, those settings. If I will figure out this one, then I also can control the speed from the UCCNC software. In this week, I will start to make a plan for this uh, console keyboard touchscreen thingy here. And tomorrow, maybe I will do a really small video about the designing of this uh, front panel, including the first cut. Yeah? <laughs> so, I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye!